Hey everyone, my name is Joe and I'm going to be facilitating this course for you today. Today we're going to be talking about Smartsheets introduction. So what exactly is Smartsheets? Well, Smartsheets is an amazing application that helps us to track our tasks in our daily work lives. It also gives us the capabilities of creating reports, doing some project management, assigning tasks, and also creating dashboards to analyze our data. So without further ado, let's get right into it. In order to start using Smartsheets, you're going to have to subscribe to one of their plans. Now they have four plans in total, and I wanna share with you each of those. To actually access Smartsheet, we're gonna to have to go to their website. So I'm gonna open up a web browser, and today I'm gonna to use Google Chrome, but you're more than welcome to use any one that you like. I'm going to go to smartsheet.com. And to find the four different plans, you're going to head over to the pricing. Now, once we go to pricing, you'll notice that it's broken into two different categories, standard category and enterprise. Now, if I click on standard, this is where you can choose an individual subscription which is $14 per month. And it tells you all the different features that you can have access to with this plan. They then also have a business plan as well, which is $25 per user per month. Now, if you work for an enterprise or a really large company, you can click on enterprise and you can see here all the different benefits. Now, it's not as simple as the other two subscriptions where you could just go to standard and typically click on buy plan and start using it right away. With the enterprise plan, what they do is they ask you to contact them so that they can really just customize it to your exact needs. Now they have one more other plan as well called the premier plan. Now this is a really great plan for those of you that want extra plus features, right? The dynamic views, data uploaders, calendar apps, everything. So you're more than welcome to take a look at any of these plans, see which one that you like the most, and see which one fits you, and then go ahead and subscribe to them. Now for me, I'm just simply using the individual plan. So there's gonna be some limitations as to what I can do in terms of if you were using a business plan. But no worries, we're still gonna have a great class and I'm gonna show you all the features that you can access. Now that you have a plan in mind, let us actually log in. To log in, I'm going to click on the login button right up here in the top right hand corner. Give that a click. And you can either sign in with your email or password that you created. Or if you don't have a login yet, you can always just click on don't have a login sign up. You can also sign in with your single sign on with your Google account, Apple account, or even Microsoft account. Now, if you work for a company that's already using Smartsheets, I would just contact your admin and ask them for your credentials. So I'm just gonna put mine in real quick. And there we go. And then the password. And it's gonna log us right in. Now, once you're logged in, you're gonna be brought to this interface here. And this is where you can get started with many different features. For instance, you'll notice that I can start working on a work app. Now, if you don't know what a work app is, no worries. The only way you can actually use these work apps is if you have an enterprise plan. So even if I went to create an app, it would say, you need to contact us for an enterprise plan. Now, creating the apps, it's actually pretty cool. I've seen a couple of demos on this, and you're more than welcome to watch their little demo video here. Essentially, what it is, is it's creating your own mobile app or even desktop app with app having to know how to code. It's a really cool thing. And it goes through workflows, very similar to Power Apps or Power Automate. Now, next up, we also have the option to take a look at any sheets that we've been working on. Now, you'll notice that I have been working on a couple, like my monthly tracking sheet, or my profit report sheet, or even student practice sheet. Underneath there, we have our workspaces. And this is where we can create a workspace if we want to share multiple sheets at once with our coworkers. This is really a great tool. 
because instead of having to share all three of these individually with five people, I can create a workspace for the five people, and then I could just put those three sheets in here and they will get access to it immediately. So it's really a great idea to create some workspaces there. And then last but not least, we have deleted items. And of course, this is if you deleted something, it will go here and you'll have the option to restore it. Now underneath our browse options, we have something called the recent, and this will show you the most recently opened sheets or even reports that you've accessed. Underneath that is something called favorites. So if you wanted to add a frequently you know, created sheet here, like let's say maybe I created this student practice sheet and I'm always accessing it, you can start it right here and then it will go into your favorites. So it's easier to find. And then last but not least, we have something called the Solution Center. And it looks like a plus icon. If you give it a click, this is where you can browse all different types of templates or even create brand new grid projects, projects, cards, task lists, forms, or even create a report or a dashboard. I just want to throw this out there that if you're using a report or a dashboard, you'll need to have data first and one of these other ones. If you don't have it, it's not going to work. The report is pulling information from the grid, project cards, tasks, or forms, and then creating a report out of it. And same thing for dashboards. It's creating your visualizations from data that's already existing. So you have to create one of these first in order to use these two. Now, what else is there in this interface? Well, if you go over here, you'll see that you can get some help, whether you want to show some helpful tips or even learn some more things by video tutorials or other helpful guides. We then have notifications where they will notify you about anything. Like for instance, hello, there's a new task that's been added to my project A. So it gives me that notification that somebody has actually added something. Now I'm gonna show you how we can create these workflows and these auto notifications and we'll do that a little later. Next up, we have our grid, our launcher, our waffle, whatever you like to call it. And if you give it a click, you'll see that we have three different sections we can go to. Work apps, which will just simply bring us back to that work app interface here. And remember, we can only use this if we have the enterprise plan here. And then also center of excellence. This is where you can actually get started with some great video tutorials. You can get certified in Smartsheets, which I always recommend, or even just get some great guides and new content that's popped up here and new features that have been upgraded. So really nice that they offer you this. And then last but not least, Solution Center will just bring you back to that same Solution Center from before, where we can either create from scratch or browse different templates. So take a moment, try it out on your own, look at all these different buttons here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about all the different account settings that we have access to in this menu. Let us talk about our account settings. To actually access them, we're going to go over to the top right hand corner and click on this person icon. Once you give that a click, you're going to get your account menu. Now there's a couple of great things here, like we can upgrade our current plan to a newer plan, or we can see what plan we're on and what billing information we have. Now we also have user management and group management, but the only way you can use these is if you have a business plan. So if I click on it, since I don't have a business plan, it'll tell me that I would have to upgrade to a business plan or higher to actually use it. But they're pretty straightforward. The user management is simply managing your users. And then the group management is where you can take those users and create different groups and assign them a group owner. And last but not least, the login history is to see all the users that have logged in successfully. I'm just going to give this X a click, close it out. Now the other things we can do here is access our personal settings, our apps and integrations, personalize some colors and logos, and then upgrade our Smartsheet contacts. Now we're going to talk about Smartsheet contacts once we're in the sheets. But just so you know, you can add contacts 
right here by clicking on it, and then adding a contact, putting their name and their information in there. But we can also do that when we're in the sheet itself. And the last thing you can do here is you can sign out of your account and sign in to a different account or sign back in later on. Now with that said, let's actually create our first sheet. To create a sheet, we're gonna go over to the Solution Center, go to Create, and we are going to choose from either Grid, Project, Card, Task List, Form. But take a moment, get here, and when we come back, we're gonna create our first sheet. We're gonna create our first sheet, and today I've decided to use the Grid Sheet, so that's the one I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna give it a click, and when you do that, the first thing it's gonna ask you to do is name the sheet. Now, I'm gonna just name it Project A. And once you name it, click OK, and it's gonna open you up into the sheet interface. Now, there's a lot of things we can do here, so we're just gonna go over a couple of the cool features on this interface. The first one is my menus. You have a files menu with a bunch of different commands, automation menu, and a forms menu. And we'll go over some of those a little later. You then have the name of your project A, which we just named it, and then we can add it as a favorite, or even go over to the share and actually share this sheet right away so that we can start collaborating with our coworkers. We then have access right below it to all of these different tools, like whether we wanna save the sheet or print it, or change the view or take a look at the filter, or even access some of the formatting tools. And we'll talk about all these a little later. All the way over to my right is where we can have conversations about this sheet. We can attach files associated with the sheet, proof this sheet so that we can get a nice feedback review. We can also update requests for the sheet. So if we wanna keep track of how this project's going, we're more than welcome to create a new request. And then we can also publish this sheet, analyze the sheet and see the activity on it, or even get a sheet summary. Now some of those you'll notice, like publishing, I would have had to upgrade to a different plan. So some of these features will not be accessible to you if you're using the individual plan. So take a moment, take a look at all these things, and when we come back, we're gonna start to talk about our columns and our rows. If you've ever used anything like Google Sheets or even Microsoft Excel, you'll notice that Smartsheets works in a similar fashion. We have our cells, and then we also have our columns, and we have our rows. Now the columns do work a little differently. You'll notice that we do have a primary column, column two, three, four, and so on and so forth. And in order to actually change these columns, you'll have to double click on them. So let's say that I wanted to take this primary column and turn it into, let's say the tasks. I wanna put the tasks here. Well, to change the name or even rename this, just double click. Now when you double click, it's gonna open up this column properties. And it's important to know that each column has something called a column type. Now it's important that you see the primary column is a little different. See, you can't change the column type for the primary column. It has to always be either a text or a number. It can't be a date, it can't be anything else but a text or a number. So keeping that in mind, I'm gonna use this first column for simply tasks. So I'm gonna say task name. And that's all I can do, so I'll click OK. And now this is where I can put my tasks. So let's actually create a couple of tasks here. I'm gonna click into this first cell, and I'm just gonna start typing. And I'm gonna put, let's do planning phase. Let's add a couple more, and you're more than welcome to follow along with me. I'm gonna put marketing plan. Let's do business plan. Let's do launch plan, and then product marketing, 
pricing strategy. Let's add packaging design. And let's do some product release. So product release, and we'll do a demo. And of course we need a version one and a version two, why not? So take a moment and write those down. Now, I wanna think about what column two is gonna be. So let's double click on column two. And the first thing that I notice is that with column two, since it's not the primary column, I actually can change the column type to many different things. It doesn't have to be just a text or a number. Maybe I wanna put a drop-down list that has all my contacts. Maybe I wanna do a date or a drop-down list with a single select or a drop-down list where they can select multiple items. Maybe a checkbox where they can check the box or uncheck it or a symbol or even an auto number system where it will go one, two, three in some sort of sequence. But what I'm thinking is, why not put an assigned to so that I know who's assigned to this task? So I'm going to name it assigned to. And the column type that I think would be best for this would be a contact list so that I have their email inside of there and I can email them right away that they're assigned this task. So I'm going to click on contacts list. Now, depending on what kind of column type you select, you're going to have different options. Like if I select date, Nothing. If I select drop down, you'll get a little expanded dialog box. Checkbox, nothing. Symbols, once again expanded. So we're going to choose contact list and we can start to entering names or email addresses into these cells. So for instance, right now I can use myself and then you'll see my in parentheses email there. So I can add myself as a contact. I can add other people as well just by entering their names. So let's say my good friend Ben. I can add Ben to the list. I can add my friend Liz to the list. And I can add my friend Sammy to the list. And then click OK. So now I can start to actually assign these things. If you click into the cell, you'll notice we have a drop down. And if I click on it, we have Ben me, Liz, and Sammy. But you're probably saying to yourselves, well, Joe, that doesn't really help because you have the email address, but they don't. You can actually click here and start to add new people. So if I wanted to add new, I can put their name and their email address in here, and I can actually add them to my Smartsheet contact list. Yep, that's the same one I was talking about before when we went to our profile settings here and went to My Smartsheet Contacts. Really cool that we have those options. So it's your choice whether you just wanna add somebody like this or if you actually wanna add them with an email address. For today's practice, I think it's fine that we have just their names there. So I'm gonna go down and just assign these things to different people. There we go. And you can assign it to whoever. It's not important who you're assigning these to. I'm gonna assign myself some stuff. We'll say Ben's in charge of that. And then we'll say that Liz and then Sammy. Now, when you first select somebody, you'll notice that I can only select one person at a time. And to change that, we can double click back into the header here, assigned to, and we can choose to allow multiple contacts per cell, because maybe there's two people working on a task instead of just one each. You'll choose that at this time, and then now I could say that Ben and also somebody else is working on this. Let's say maybe Sammy is working on it as well. So really nice that we have that. Now, another thing that I want to do here, besides allowing multiple contacts per cell, is I may want to restrict to list only the values, which means I can't just add anyone else's name in here. As of right now, I can. I can add whoever I want. Let's say here I want to add a Henry. You're more than welcome to do that. 
But if I don't want that to happen, I can double click and restrict it to only this list. So when I click here, it says, nope, you're not allowed to do that. Now, since I'm the sheet admin, of course, I can allow myself to do this, but I'm gonna cancel. I'll just add Ben back. So take a moment, try that out on your own, and when we come back, we're gonna add some more columns. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to add a couple other column types. So for instance, for column three, I'm gonna double click. And what I wanna do here is, I wanna put some sort of status about these tasks, whether they're done, maybe they're in progress, maybe they haven't even been started. So I'm gonna call this one the status. And for that, there's multiple things I can use. I can use symbols or a checkbox, or I can even use a drop-down box. But what I wanna do for this one is use symbols. Now there's different symbols you can use, like a flag symbol where you toggle it on or off, or a star symbol, or priority, or a decision. They have all different types. Or a status, which is exactly what I want. I want a status. And for this one, I'm just gonna use, uh, let's do the red, yellow, green, or gray. And then I'm going to restrict to symbols only. I don't want anything else in this column but these symbols. I'm gonna click OK. Now at this moment, I can choose from a dropdown all these different symbols here. And I'll do a couple. I'll say the planning phase is actually completed. We'll say the marketing plan is in progress. So we'll say yellow means in progress. We'll say the business plan is completed. The launch plan is in progress. The product marketing plan is on hold. Something happened, we'll say. The pricing strategy is in progress. The packaging design has not been started. The product release has not been started. The demo's in progress. And we'll say not started and not started. Why not? There we go. You know what? Let's change pricing strategy to green. Now, the first thing that I ask myself is this. How is anyone else going to know what I was thinking when I created these colors, right? I'm thinking green is completed, yellow is in progress, red is on hold, and gray is not started. But nobody else can think the same way that I do. So how will they know what each color denotes? Well, to actually do that, we can add something called an information. And if I click on this little drop down right underneath my column header, you'll get the column menu. And we can add a column description. Now, when I add this column description, it's going to populate this little box where I can summarize what this column means or what each color means. So I might do something like this I might say green is equal to completed, and yellow is equal to in progress and red is equal to on hold and then gray is equal to not started then i can click ok now you will notice there's this little eye icon and when you hover over it it tells you what each color means this is very beneficial and you can add one of these column descriptions to all the columns in case you want to add a column description explaining what this column does. Now, let's keep going. We're gonna add two more columns here, column four and five. We're gonna say that column four is going to be my start date, because I wanna know when this task is gonna start. So I'll call it a start date. And of course, since it's a start date, you probably already know which column type I'm gonna choose. Yeah, of course, date. Now I'm gonna restrict it to only dates. I don't want them putting anything else but a date in there. I'm gonna click OK. And now when you click in the cell, it pulls up this little calendar right here where we can select different dates. Now I'm also gonna put in a due date as well. So I'm gonna say something like, I'm gonna double click and I'm going to do due date. 
and now I'm going to choose date restricted to dates only and click OK. So now I have a due date and a start date. And let's put one more. Let's call this one on column six estimated cost. I want to know what the cost is going to be estimated for each task. Now for that, I could just keep it text or number since that's what it's going to be. And we can add a couple of just different types of numbers there. So take a moment, create those, and then you can put in any start date, due date, or estimated cost that you want. And when we come back, I'll have mine filled out, and then we'll get started once again. Welcome back, everyone. So what I did was I filled out some of the start dates, due dates, and estimated cost. Now we're going to talk about how we can format or change the appearance of some of this text. Like for instance, I really don't want just an estimated cost to be numeric like this. I want it to be an actual currency. So to do that, I'm going to select them all by clicking and dragging. I'm going to go to the ellipses or the three dots right here for more. And I'm going to choose United States dollar. Now you can choose other currencies as well, whichever one that you like. I'm going to use US dollar. And I also don't want the cents because there's nothing in the cents. So I can decrease the decimal or increase it by using these buttons respectively. And I'll just simply decrease the decimal. And there we go. Looks good. I can also select my task names and I can maybe bold them or change the way that they look. Maybe I want the font to be times. That looks good. Maybe actually I want all of this to be times. Perfect. So take a moment, try that out on your own, and also keep in mind that we can use bold, italicize, underline, we can change the font size, we can strike through or even color the background of the cell a certain color, color code, or even change the font color. Take a moment, try it out on your own, and when we come back, we're going to talk about how we can use functions inside of Smartsheets as well. Now that we've formatted our sheet, what I want to do is add another column. To add another column, since we've ran out of them, it's simple. You're going to right click on this column, and you'll see it brings up this menu here where we can enter the column to the left or to the right. And I'm going to enter the column to the right. Now we're going to call this column overall completion. And the reason why we're creating this is because a lot of people complained that the status, even though we have those status dots with the colors and we have a description describing what each color means, they want to actually just see what the current status is. They want to see the word completed or uh, in progress, not started or on hold. So we're going to give them that. But I don't want to have to rewrite them all now manually. So we're going to use something called a function to do that. And if you've ever used Google Sheets or Excel, then you may be familiar with this function. It's called the if function. So we're going to make this column, call it overall completion, and just make it a text slash number column type and click OK. Now, what I want to do is I simply want to base what it says here off of what the color is here. So if it's green, over here I'll say completed. And if it's yellow, over here it'll say in progress. If it's red, it'll say on hold. And if it's gray, it will simply say not started. So we're going to take a moment and we're going to write this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is to start any type of calculation, formula, or function, we have to start with the universal sign of mathematics, which is the equal sign. So we're going to use equals. And now we're going to type in our statement. We're going to say if, and it's going to say, okay, the if evaluates a logical expression, so it asks a question, and if it's true, it'll do something, but if it's false, it'll do something different. So I'm going to type in equals if, and press tab on my keyboard, which is next to the Q. Now it's going to ask me, what is the question you're trying to ask? And I'm just simply asking, what does this cell, is this cell equal to green? So I'm going to type in green. Now if that's true, then I want it to simply say complete. 
Now you have to use quotation marks. And the reason why is because, well, the computer doesn't understand English. So we have to put it in something called a string of text. So it's going to be, if the status row is equal to green, then write complete. But if not, well, then we're going to create another if function and press tab again. And we're going to say, if it's not green, if this one's actually a different color, let's say if it is, I don't know, we'll do yellow next. If it's yellow, well, if it's yellow, then you're going to write in progress. So I'll put in progress. And once again, we're going to put a comma and it's going to be if it's not green and if it's not yellow, well, then it might be red. So if we're going to put in a third if function, if the same cell here is equal to red, if that's true, well, then I want you to put on hold. And last but not least, if none of those are true, if all of those are not true, if it's not green, if it's not yellow, if it's not red, well, then we're just going to simply put not started. And then we're going to close that with one, two, three parentheses. Okay. And when we press enter, let's see if it works. And look at that. It works perfectly because look, it says complete. And if I change this to yellow, it says in progress. And if I change it to red, it says on hold. And if I change it to gray, it says not started. So it's working great. But do we really want to write that huge function again? No, probably not. So what I want to do is use something called autofill, which is really cool that they allow us to do that. Now autofill simply follows a pattern. So it sees here that it says this function, if green, if yellow, if red, if nothing, then not started. And it's going to drag it down by clicking on that little square right there in the bottom right hand corner of the cell. And you're going to click over it till you get a black crosshair cursor and then click and drag down. And what it will do is it will fill out the rest and you will see respectively the colors and then the overall status. So take a moment, try that out on your own. Pause the video if you want to see that full, once again, formula there or function. Write it out and then autofill and I'll see you back. What we're going to talk about next is conditional formatting. Now, if you don't know what conditional formatting is, no worries. It simply means that based off of a condition or criteria, the formatting or the appearance will change. Now to access it, we're going to go over to our sub bar here and we're going to click on this icon. Now it says here that we can also get some help on conditional formatting or even watch a video tutorial about conditional formatting. So I'm going to give that a click and it's going to pop up this dialog box and it's going to say, okay, do you want to add a new rule? And I'm going to say, yeah, sure. Now I have to set the condition and what I'm thinking is, wouldn't it be cool that if this was marked as green and this said completed, then it crossed out the task name. Well, I think that'd be awesome. So let's do that. I'm going to set the condition and I'm going to say that whenever the status is green, which means completed, click OK. Whenever the status is green, then I'm going to apply this format. So this appearance and I'm going to use strike through so that it crosses out. As you can see, it's starting to happen. But the problem is it's doing this for the entire row. And I don't necessarily want it to cross out my estimated cost or my complete or the start and due dates. So I'm going to click on entire row and I'm just going to say apply to the task name only. And then when I click OK, there we go. Click OK again. And now anytime that we choose to change the status, let's say product release, and I click and I choose green. Not only will it change it here and say complete, but it will now also cross out the task name. Take a moment, try it out on your own, and when we come back, I'm going to talk to you about rearranging these columns. 
let's say that I want to customize this sheet a little more. For instance, I want to move my start date and I also want to move my due date over this way. It's actually easy to do this. All you have to do is click on the start date and click and drag to the left. And then I'll click on the due date header here, click and drag to the left. And let's say I wanted status next to overall completion. I can click and drag that to the right. And there we go. You can also use other commands that you may be familiar with, like Control C for copy, and then Control V for paste, or even Control X to cut, and Control V to paste. So what else can you actually do to customize these sheets? Well, let's say for instance that I wanted to customize it so that there was a hierarchy. Maybe for instance, everything under the planning phase is going to be market plan, business plan, and launch plan. And then everything that's underneath the product marketing would be something like price strategy and packaging design. Then everything underneath product release will be demo version one and version two. So in doing it this way, we're creating a hierarchy system that's gonna be beneficial to us when we want to view certain hierarchies or certain tasks by either phase or by whatever header that we like. So for instance, let's say that I wanted to indent this. To do that, you'll notice we have an indent button right here where we can either indent or outdent whatever way we want. So I'm going to click on market plan and I'm going to indent. Now what that's gonna do is it's going to make this a child to this parent column here, which is the planning phase. And if I click on that little minus icon, it's gonna plug it up. If I click on the plus, it's gonna expand it. So now I can go here and indent this one, here, indent, and now all three of these, the market plan, business plan, and launch plan are now the children of the planning phase. Now I'm gonna do that for the rest of them as well. I'm gonna take price strategy and make it a child to product marketing and package design as well. And then for the product release, I'm gonna make these the children of product release. So now if I wanted to plug up everything, it would be plugged up in three things, planning phase, product marketing, and product release. And there we go. So take a moment, I want you to try this out on your own, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about filling in the colors here to color code these different plans. Since we added a hierarchy, why not add a color coded plan to this as well? To do that, it's fairly simple. All you have to do is select what you wanna color code, and then click on this little bucket icon to fill the background color with, well, whatever color you like. For instance, maybe the planning phase, I want all of these to be blue. So I'm gonna do a nice light blue there and make sure that I have everything perfect. And then for my product marketing, I'm gonna make sure that this is, I don't know, let's do green. And then for my product release, I'm gonna make those red. There you go, now I have everything color coded. And it's looking great. So take a moment, try that out on your own, and we'll have some more fun when we come back. Our sheet here is really coming together, and I may want to filter some of this data. For instance, maybe what I want to see is just my planning phase and nothing else. To do this, we're going to go over to the filter on our taskbar here, and we're going to give this a click. Now once I click it, it's going to ask us to name it, and of course that's optional. And I'm actually going to name this the planning phase. Now it's going to say show rows that match all conditions. And I'm going to say that the first condition is that the task name is one of the, and then I can choose which ones I want, like maybe the planning phase or the marketing plan, the launch plan. I think that looks good, business plan too. Now you don't have to add the planning phase in here and I'll tell you why. 
See, once we select these three, we can also include the parent rows. And since these three are the children of the planning phase, I can include the parent row and click apply. Or if I didn't really want to see the planning phase, I could just not include that parent row so that it will only show the planning phase plans here. And I'll click apply. And there we go. Now that stays there. I can always turn on more filters or even edit this one or delete it or make a copy of it. So take a moment, try that out on your own and make a couple of different filters that you would want to see. Let's turn off the filter by going to the filter off button here. The next thing we're going to talk about is how we can attach files and comments to our tasks. Or we can also attach files and comments to our entire project A. Now to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is take a look to the left of the primary column. You'll notice we have a couple of other columns here. Attachments, comments, proofs, and also more actions. So if I click that, you'll see we can hide certain columns. Now, if I wanted to, let's say, add a pricing strategy file, I can click on the little file icon here, and we can either add a file to row six, which is directly related to pricing strategy, or I can add a file to the entire sheet overall as a general file. You could do this if maybe you wanna have what each employee is in control of, or what each employee was tasked with, or if you click into row, you can just attach a file determining price strategy. So I'm going to click on attach files to row six. And you can attach a file from either your computer, a OneDrive, Google Drive, Box, Dropbox, or even get a URL link. I'm going to click upload from computer. I'm just going to use a random file here. And click open. Now it's going to upload that file so everyone who's on this project will have access to it. Now everyone will know there is a file here because if you click away, you'll see that that icon has now stayed. So they know that there is a attachment for pricing strategy. My favorite part about Smartsheets is right up here. I get to just save this. It says it's been 10 minutes since you last saved. You should click save. So I will. Gives you those little reminders. It's one of my favorite things. But going back to our attachments, remember that this attachment is directly connected to pricing strategy. But if I wanted to attach another file for the entire Project A sheet, I can do that by coming over here to my attachments here. That's the difference between the two. Over here, it's directly connected to a task name, but over here, it's connected to the entire project. So I'm gonna give it a click and I can go to sheet, and attach a file to the entire sheet. And we'll just upload a simple one. Let's do this one. And there we go. Now you can see all of the attachments and it'll tell you exactly where it's attached, either to the sheet or to row six. And if I click on go to row six, it brings me straight there. Really nice. Now besides attaching files, we can also add comments. Like maybe I want to add a comment here to the launch plan. And when I give it a click, it will now say that I'm having a conversation in terms of launch plan. So I can start to comment on this and say, hey, did we get the approval? It'll tell who wrote that comment and you can also see when they wrote it and what time they wrote it, and you can reply to it. You can also do app mentions if you want to notify others. I could do an app mention to myself, and I will get a separate notification telling me that somebody has mentioned me in a conversation. Now, very similar to the way we just did the files, you can either attach a conversation to an actual task like I did here, or to the entire overall project. And you can do that by either going here to attach it to a task or here to see the conversation for the entire file. And I could say, great job, everyone. So take a moment, try that out on your own. And when we come back, 
we'll get into some more fun stuff. For most of this training, we have been in what is known as the grid view. But I want you to know that Smartsheets has multiple views. There's actually three other options that we can use to actually view this data in a different way. Now, to actually see what view you're on, you're going to go right up here and you will see it that we are on that grid view. And I'm gonna give that a click. I'm gonna click the drop down, and you will see we have three other options. The Gantt view, the card view, and the calendar view. Now in order to use these other views, there are some requirements for each one. And we're gonna start off with the card view. The card view is a way to organize and prioritize your tasks in your list, and you can use it in your sheet if you have a drop down list, a contact list, or even a symbols column. Now, I know that we have that because right here we have our contacts list for assigned to, we have drop down lists, and we also have symbols list. So we can click on the card view, and I'm going to give that a click. And look at that, we are now in the card view. Now, the card view is very unique. We can move the cards around real quick by clicking and dragging. We can change the levels of what we're seeing. Maybe we only want to see level one, which means the parents. Or maybe we want to see level two, which are the children. Or maybe just all the levels. We can also, instead of viewing by status, we can view by assigned to and see how many tasks Ben has, Liz, Sammy, and myself. You can add more tasks as well, and you can also add another lane. Maybe I want to add another person onto this project. You can access different features like Compact View, where it doesn't have every single thing showing, or our Detailed View. You can go to the settings, and you can choose what each card will display. Maybe I really don't care about the status being on there. Maybe I just want the overall completion on there instead. So people don't really know the color of the dots, but they will see if it's completed or not. And I'll click OK. And now you'll see complete, on hold, in progress, which is perfect. And then I can view by status still. With that said, we have two other views. If I click on this drop down, you'll see the next view we have is called the Gantt view. Now the Gantt view offers a timeline based view on your work and it gives you a visual representation of your tasks. But you can only use it if you have two date based columns. And we do. If I go back to my grid view, you'll see that we have the start date, that's one date column, and the due date. So I know for a fact that I can use the Gantt view. So let's head over to Gantt view and take a look at what it looks like. Now you might be saying not much has changed. Yes. In the Gantt view, we also have the grid still. But if you go over to the right, you will notice now that we have the Gantt. Now this is really great because it's a nice visualization of how we can see when the project started and when the due date is for each project. You can also zoom in and out. Right now we're looking at each day in each month. But if I click the little zoom out icon, I can now see each week in each month. If I zoom out again, I can see each month in each quarter. And if I zoom out one more time, I can see each quarter in each year. You can change these too. So if I wanted to zoom in a little bit, maybe I want to make it so that the planning phase is simply a little longer. So you'll notice that the due date for my planning phase is 319 but I can stretch that out by going to the corner here till I get my double headed arrow and change it. Now it's due on the 22nd. So take a moment, try that out, and then we're gonna go over our last other view. Let us talk about our last view, which is called the calendar view. If you click on the little drop down, you will see calendar view. Now the calendar view allows you to view your tasks on the calendar, but you can only use it if you have at least one date column. So you'll see we do have two date columns. That's why we were able to use the Gantt view. So of course we can use the calendar view. I'm gonna give it a click and it's gonna automatically ask us for some settings. It's gonna say, well, what do you wanna display? 
Do I only want to display the start date or do I want to display a range of dates? And it's really up to you on what you're trying to look at. For today, I'm going to display a range of dates and I'm going to do the start date and the due date. I'm going to click OK. And there we go. Now we can see them on one month or three weeks or two weeks or even one week. But I like to keep it in the month view. Not only that, but we can also mark and color code these by right clicking on them, setting up a color setting, and I'll make that red, I'll make that blue, and let's make this one green. So take a moment, try that out, and then we'll come right back. Let us head back to the grid view by clicking the drop down and selecting grid view. The next thing I want to talk to you about is being able to collaborate this sheet with other coworkers. To do this, we're going to go over to the share button in the top right hand corner. We're going to give that a click. And once you do that, it's going to open up this dialog box and ask you to enter in your coworkers email. Now at this moment, you can also set the permissions, whether they can become the admin, editor and share, editor and not share, or just be a viewer. And if you wanted to get more detail on each of these, you can click the information icon and hover over and it will give you a better description. Now, not only that, but you can also add a subject line or even a personal message that you want to say to your coworker, like, thanks for helping. Once you're done, you can simply click on share sheet and there you go. You'll now be able to collaborate with your coworker in real time and both work on this sheet at the same time. What happens if you don't want to share the entire sheet, but you just want to share pieces of the sheet? Well, to do that, the first thing you're going to want to do is select exactly what you want to share. So I'm going to select, let's say, we'll do these rows here. So I'll select the launch plan and the packaging design, pricing, and product. These are the four that I want to share with my friend Sammy. After I select them, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select send. Now at this moment, it's going to only send four rows to Sammy. And then I can say that this is a quick update about project A, and here's a quick update. Now I can include all the columns, attachments, and comments, or I can edit that out. Maybe I don't want them to see this comment on launch plan, so I'm not going to include that. There are no attachments, so even though I have this selected, I don't really have to worry about it, but that's up to you if you want to add the attachments. I just want to show them the task name, the assigned to, and the estimated cost. That's all they asked for. They don't want the start date, due date, status, or overall completion. So I'm going to click OK, and those are the three columns and the four rows that I'd be sending. So if you don't want to share the entire sheet, you can always just share certain information about the sheet by once again selecting what you want to share, right-clicking, and then sending. And there you go. Another way to share the Smartsheet is to share it as a PDF. And to do that, you're going to go over to the File tab, and you're going to select Send as Attachment. Now, once you click that, it's going to open up this dialog box, and it's going to ask you who you want to send it to, what the subject should be, and the message. Now, you can either send it as a Microsoft Excel file or as a PDF. It's up to you. Then once you're done, you click Send, and there you go. Another way to share this data is by publishing it, by going right over here to the right and clicking on the Publish button. Now you do need a business plan or higher to publish, but once you upgrade to that plan, you'll be able to publish it or even embed it to a website. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you really enjoyed this course and got a lot out of it. If you like this course, check out the Smartsheets Advanced. Thanks for watching. 
Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit LearnIt.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing LearnIt.